If they become available, we just collect it. And Frank and Nancy Cornelius have quite a few collections. You want to come this way, she can show you. Their basement is full of interesting things. Packer collection, tons of beads like this. You'll also find trolls. Any type of troll you want, and they have them there. And antiques. This is an old oxen. That's an oxen shoe. Antique glass. And you can't forget the frogs. Just about everything you can think of in frogs. Have a frog band. They'll play music. Metal frogs that come in. Drinking frogs. Kermit the frog. And some more frogs. But when you hop on over next door. All righty, come on in. You'll find the most impressive collection that the two own. Turn the lights on. This is a uh, Frank and Nancy's Marine Corps Museum. What was once an old laundromat is now a private museum. A lot of history here. With literally everything Marines and military related you can think of. Some office furniture. And uniforms. And the khaki, herringbone, tropical, camouflage. And weapons. A Springfield, 1903, with its being up. Frank and Nancy have it all. And then some of the communication gear. But this is just one room. We'll go on this side and show you some of the goodies here. Oh my God, I thought that was it. Are you kidding me? The collection seems never ending. And truthfully, we probably could put another room on the same size and start filling that up. <laughs> They say half are their own belongings and half are donations. We record everything that everybody gives us. So why do all this? Well, I think it's important that everybody, not only the young kids that should know a little bit about the service, how hard it actually is to become a Marine and the, what the things they have to endure to serve their country. Frank knows that firsthand. The United Native enlisted with the Marines in 1952. They said, if you're man enough to give your life for your country, you can join us. And that's when I signed up for the Marine Corps right out of high school. And he moved up quickly in his 80-man platoon. They made me the right guy, which is kind of the boss of the platoon. He'd eventually become a drill instructor and a non-commissioned officer. I had eight months in the Marine Corps when they commissioned me a second lieutenant. He served a 13-month tour in Korea in 1953, came home and resigned his commission, but was later commissioned 10 years later once Vietnam started. I don't think you'll find any other person in any service commission two times. He retired after 22 years of service as a master sergeant, then was later retired as a captain. You can talk to them and they can talk to you because it's so noisy. And now he's using his experience and museum to teach others. And I believe every individual, girl or boy, should have some discipline and learn a little bit about the service because it is their country. If they don't serve, they should know what people are doing to serve them. And Nancy has just as much pride looking around the museum as her husband. This is my country. This is my people. These are the things I fight for. As a woman, I'm very <laughs> emotional about it. So go on now for a free tour. Everybody can afford it. But keep your eyes peeled. They never knew this existed. They passed it by the weeks, months, and years. They don't even know it's here. And prepare for a great history lesson. Three days later, half those men were killed. The combat was still going on. And a sight unlike anything else. They're impressed. They're, they're shocked. They're amazed, every one of them. In De Pere, Nate Stewart, Local 5 News. And if you'd like to check out Frank and Nancy's Marine Corps Museum for yourself, you can find them off County Road E in De Pere. Appointments are encouraged. Just give them a call at the number you see on the screen. Admission is free.